back to uh, Streaming Media East 2018. I'm here with Eric John from IAB. I'm Tim Siglin, contributing editor with Streaming Media Magazine. Eric, good to have you. Um, tell me your title at IAB. So I'm the deputy director of IAB's Video Center of Excellence. I manage the care and feeding of, of the center, which focuses on you know, basically making sure that buyers and sellers are, are, are working together to address marketplace issues in the buying and selling of media. Of media, okay. And, and for those who don't know in our audience, what is IAB? IAB is the Interactive Advertising Bureau. We're the big tent under which uh, the media ecosystem comes to address issues of marketplace friction, to develop the protocols and standards that enable ads to show up in the right place at the right time to the right user and looking looking good and, and uh, that the user experience is, is a quality one. And we're also addressing issues around uh, brand safety and that was actually the topic that, that I led a panel about today. So tell me what brand safety means. So brand safety can mean, uh, you know, in, in, in people's minds who don't perhaps live in the video or in the, in the media or advertising world, uh, for consumers, it can mean, um, you know, if, if you're a CMO at a company and some consumer has a, an issue and they're tweeting about it, mm -hmm. it could be potentially a, a disparaging issue for your brand. In the media world, it can be everything from, you know, your publisher and you might have an ad for, uh, you know, some constituency that you might not think is a match for your brand. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a problem. That's okay. a, if you're an advertiser, it's your quality ad showing up in a bad place. Mm -hmm. But it's much, much bigger, and that's actually something that, that our panel discussed, is how the definition of brand safety is shifting. You know, okay. it's, it's beyond just ads showing up in the right place. It's now uh, encompassing issues of fake news, um, you know, data and the use of consumer data. And this is all playing out now in the headlines, as we see, you know, in, in Washington and, you know, across the, you know, the consumer landscape. It's really... Brand safety has become a, a really a consumer issue as well. So I know I've, I've done in the past projects for Coca-Cola, GE, Microsoft, yeah. a number of companies. And in the early days, you know, you'd want to advertise that they were your customers. And if you put the logo up within two days, you'd get a message saying, hey, take the logo down. Um, so that, I mean, that obviously was trying to keep from diluting yeah. the brand, but, to, but from the safety standpoint, you're really talking about something significantly beyond that where it could have a, a quite negative impact as opposed to just a dilution impact. Right. Now, brands have, have a real concern nowadays. Everything is moving so quickly. It's such a fragmented media space. And so, you know, you could have a brand guideline if you're, say, for instance, a, a pharmaceutical company and, you know, making sure that you're protecting that brand in the mind of consumer. There are laws around how that's done. Right, sure. Now, you know, companies across, across the board are really thinking about what are their guidelines as you think about um, especially advertising. And so what the, what the uh, uh, panel discussed was that risk reward of marketing in the, in the ecosystem today. You know, you can, with a press of a button, distribute your advertising across a sure. landscape. Right. Um, and, you might not actually be able to control if it's user-generated content, mm -hmm. the the, uh, the conversation that flows after you place your ad. Right. So right. it's it's really a, a lot of balancing risk and reward in how you manage. And, and would it be as granular as deciding that you're not going to publish on particular platforms, say for instance, uh, I don't know, uh, Kick falls out of favor or Snap falls out of favor and you decide from a brand safety standpoint you don't want your brand to show up on those that you're advertising show up on those platforms. Well, it's a little bit trickier than that. You know, if, if you're a, a, a brand that has a youthful audience, mm -hmm. and you know you're and, and your audience is living every and live and uh, communicating on that platform, in many ways you can't not be right. in the conversation. Sure. So, the question sort of becomes, um, how can you control that message in a platform that that has the right audience? Okay. So issues around like influencer marketing become right. key. Right, like right, who right. do you get to be a spokesperson for your, for, your, sure. for your brand? And so there's there's best practices around that. Do you really know the history of that brand influencer and 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 and, and how they communicate and and what their you know what their audience is really like? It's brands you, you can do the homework and really understand you know what's the what's the the safer bet in terms of who you market with. So I assume then you know you're talking about essentially the gatekeeping to decide about the influencer if at some point down the line that influencer 
falls out of favor. Um, you know, in the publishing world, we have embargoes and kills. You know, is there a sort of the same model there where you would essentially kill off advertising that is somewhat static or residual on a platform because you no longer want that brand ambassador to be associated with your brand? Or, or is the risk just that you have those historical um, residuals sitting out there that you don't really have control over once you've released them. Well, I think you actually raised three Sorry, three issues I, I in there. So the, the first is 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 knowing who who you're marketing with, and two, right. this stuff is happening in real time. So it raises a, a technical question of, right. of how you know a brand or a platform can get in front of of, for instance, user generated content. Uh, you could have a, a high quality journalistic story. Mm -hmm from a quality source, but you could, uh, the, the response to that story suddenly creates a firestorm. Sure. You could have a, a, a brand influencer, a, an athlete, who does something that you never would imagine, and right. suddenly you're, they're persona non grata. Right. You could have, uh, you know, th these scenarios are, are really real time. And so the other thing we talked about on the panel was, what are the solutions that are, are coming on the, on the you know, horizon that are helping brands and publishers get in front of this? Uh, technologies like uh, AI and machine learning that can help scan content so before your ad appears, it's actually reading the surrounding environment and making right. sure it's right. Almost like having the eight second dump button. On, it, in, in you could think broadcast. of it that way. Yeah. We're not there yet. And okay. video is a really complex, if you think about it, sure. it's a really complex object. Right, so you right. can do text with taxonomy and, and metadata. Video is a, is a different beast, so there's, there's efforts around that. And uh, another emerging technology we talked about was blockchain. Okay. And that's an interesting, uh, from the perspective of, of it's, it's, it has a potential to improve transparency mm -hmm. because it's a ledger, essentially, a right. distributed right. ledger right. where buyers and sellers or transactional partners mm -hmm. are truly um, understood. Mm -hmm. And, and you're disintermediating um, a lot of the layers that have made the, the marketplace really murky. Okay. So uh, a lot of interest in seeing how that evolves. <laughs> nice. Eric, appreciate your time. Yeah. And uh, we'll be right back with our next guest.